What's up everybody, Mike B with Bombero Bus. Today we'll be messing around and by the end of this video you'll see the first start on that Type 4 engine that we pulled from the barn and you'll see the bug get its front end lowered. So stick around. If you like it, subscribe. If not, leave a comment. Let me know what's up. Hello, my brother's beam came in. That's for Sophie. If you've seen her before, he doesn't like this uh, unsightly gap there and been wanting to lower it down. So he got this adjustable beam. This is the empty that I was talking about. And uh, I'll help him out with that. But uh, what I really showed up for is the rooster and the rat's revenge. So this engine, if you remember what this thing looked like, it was pretty bad, but it was, you know, on the surface. Underneath, it's turned out to be a pretty good looking motor. That's that Type 4, two liter that came out of there. And I went ahead and did some things to prepare for trying to start this thing up. So one thing that's gotta be connected is the distributor to the coil. We didn't have that. This is the original distributor but uh, the points were rusted shut. So I've put new points in there and gapped them. Uh, these aren't the wires that came with it. Put some new wires and some pretty new spark plugs in there. So the coil is hooked up to the negative side, going to the dizzy. The positive side is running over here to a hot on the solenoid we've got a positive and a negative on a battery there that negative came over here and is grounded to the nut on a starter the positive i've hooked up to the power side of the starter solenoid and to make things safer i put a switch in one other thing we did was we needed a way to indicate if oil pressure was building. So we've just hooked a test light up here to the oil pressure sensor for your dummy light. And then we've got that coming over here and hooked up to the starter solenoid as well. So when I hit this switch, we should see that light come on. And when pressure is built up, oil pressure that is, that light should go off. So let's hit a lick and see what happens all right there you go it's uh indicating that oil pressure has built up and that's something you know we want to have in there before we go adding fuel to it and trying to get combustion so oh also there's the electric fuel pump it came that one is a carter uh, research uh, showed it was pretty reliable had some good reviews and we've already tested that by putting power to it and uh, definitely threw some fuel out there but i'm going to keep hanging out and waiting for the ups guy to bring these intake manifolds and i'll keep you guys updated as we get closer to firing up this engine bit of a scare the uh, ups man it's never taken this late it's like uh <clears throat> almost eight o'clock and this package just arrived they usually don't take that long and man i work so much my time is limited so i got a little worried that it wouldn't show up today but better late than never first time i've ordered from cb performance oh i see they uh, threw some stickers in there love that love some stickies gonna need these got a gasket for each side some hardware and these beauties right here. So, intake manifolds. Let's walk over there and see how they fit real quick. We'll do a dry fit. Well, I like it. You can imagine another one over there with a 34 carburetor sitting up on each one. That's how we're gonna feed the fuel to this thing. And now those beautiful, beautiful manifolds 
are installed. This one, when it was fuel injected, it had what appeared to be these uh, phenolic style spacers, which I've learned to appreciate because if you've seen my other video about carburetors, uh, this phenolic spacer on Roxanne knocked a lot of heat off of the carburetor. And these manifolds look short, pretty close to the head, so uh, the cylinder. So, you know, the potential for heat once you shut it off to crawl up this manifold and heat up your carb so much that it boils the fuel in the bowl could happen. So I'm going to keep those on. Came with the fuel injection setup that was on there, but I'm going to use them. So those are snugged up. They've got a, I don't have the nipple for it, but you know, this is, we are running, that does have an SVDA right here, but the carburetors themselves have a, a nice spot to hook into with a good vacuum signal. So I'll just leave these plugged up and uh, run that diaphragm off the SVDA into the carburetors. But, you know, this part here, oh man, I don't wanna do it, but you know, I don't have a bunch of carburetors laying around and sometimes sacrifices have to be made in the name of progress. So you can see I've already pulled that down rod off and we're, I'm gonna take these two carburetors off. The distance between them looks like it may be an inch or two wider than what you just saw over there on the Rats Revenge. But uh, it's hard to get a hard measurement in there. So I'm gonna pull them off, put them on that other engine and uh, see what kind of fit we got as far as the length of the down, the uh, hex bar across there. I can make some adjustments here if I need to shorten it up a little bit, but I don't know yet. Just gonna, I'm so excited about it. I'm just gonna pull them off and uh, put them on there and see what, see what we got. saw Runny. She's snuggled away under that blanket there. We had a bit of bad weather and I'm gonna go ahead and say because I <laughs> didn't hear it already. That was wrong. That was wrong. You do not run an air-cooled motor without its cooling system intact. Basically like you just saw me do. And I know this, but it had to be done because you know, for me, for that engine to be considered worthy of moving forward and spending money and time on it, I needed to know if it was gonna run. And I just wanted to hear it uh, purr, which it did. And so it was only for a few seconds and I'm not gonna start it back up again until it's all buttoned up with cooling system intact. But one thing we're going to do is that I found out is, and I'll show you when I open this up. So let me get this uh, uncovered and we'll get right back to it. All right, there it is. So these are the carburetors and the linkage that you saw it running with. These are for this linkage. It's for a type one engine. That's why it was ill fitting if you didn't notice. Uh, it fit just good enough for me to turn this thing over and I basically used it as a, a system to just test the engine and see if it would idle. That's why I didn't do any more than that with it. But they do have this same system for this type of engine, the type uh, four engine. So this hex bar here, it was too long to fit into the socket here and then the other end also fit into the socket here. They did, but I had to uh, leave it angled out a little bit at the brace there. It's not, it wouldn't have been okay for a permanent setup. And the next time you see this engine run, 
the tinware will be on, the cooling system intact, the proper linkage, and that way I can run it for uh, more than just a few seconds and start tuning it up. But man, am I excited about the way it sounded. Uh, I, that's all I needed to know, and I'll start moving forward with that. But for today, we're gonna get back on this uh, front beam here. That's my brother's and he's on the way here with some ball joints and uh, looking forward to getting this installed and can't wait for that magic moment to come when we, we're all done and we lower the jack and bam, you got a beautiful new stance, at least on the front end for now. So let's get to it and uh, we'll get back with you guys. Oh man, he never drives his truck straight up to the barn. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Are you excited? Oh, yeah. <laughs> excited. Uh, let's see what you got. A ton of grease for that new beam. You like the ball joint presser. All right. Well, I've already told him we're going to chip on this a little bit more. So there he is. We got the things we need to move forward. Let's get to it. All right, need to check this out. I just talked about buying a new linkage kit. At first, it wasn't a very good fit, and it turned out that they had particular linkages for that. But they were proud of them. It was going to be $200, and that's before taxes. So I took a risk, and the, if you remember, this one was straight, and this one was, you know angled out too far, like the hex bar was too long. And I asked myself a, one, a $200 question. Would I be willing to take a risk and cut these bars on the ends? And if it didn't work, go ahead and order the proper one. And the answer was yes, it was worth the risk. Because after looking at the new kit for the Type 4 that is specific for this, everything is the same the bar length was the same which is where i thought they were going to make their adjustments but it turns out the difference is down here in this bracket on the type four these holes are moved uh, this way and the difference that they make up in that kit they do it here in the bracket so then i thought about you know doing that myself but it was easier to, I cut a, a little bit off of this bar end. I don't remember the measurement. They were marked with pencils and uh, I cut a little bit off of this bar end right there. And everything is as lined up as it was when it was inside the type one. To my simple mind, it looks like it'll work. We have good uh, range of motion there. Everything's nice and tight. I'm going to have to, uh, you know, readjust everything, but I'm going to go for it and just see if that works out. And if it does, I saved myself $200. Meanwhile, moving forward with the beam over here, the old one is out up on the table and, uh, Just pulling more parts off of it. We've got a couple of ball joints done on the new beam, a couple more to go. And uh, just gonna keep messing around out here. But before this is over with, or when it's over with, you should hear that type four purring like a kitten. And you should look at uh, Sophie 
or the beautiful lowered stance. to the eye it's a three and a half inch drop when it was completed you remember that gap where my whole hand fit under there before uh, it's got a nice snug fitted look now only dropped the front so there's still a little bit of a rake to it gonna cruise it like that for a while and then drop the back a little bit maybe But man, it's so much better. We did take it for a little drive. Of course, you got the little bit bumpier than it was before, but that's the price you pay to uh, get the look you want. So, so far satisfied with it. For now, we're just gonna call it a win and uh, enjoy the ride. And then we'll think about what we're gonna do from so, there. Uh, if you like the video, subscribe. If not, leave a comment. Let me know what's up. Either way, thanks for watching Bombero Bus, and we'll see you on the next one.